What's going on guys? Back again with another video. This time we're going to be doing pistol drills, but instead of just having it be static like the last video, we are going to be incorporating a lot of movement, uh, shooting while moving, and then also target transitions, and then firing multiple shots in succession. Uh, all of which I find to be pretty difficult to be honest uh, as a shooter. I especially find shooting while moving to be quite a struggle for me, so this will be interesting. I'll be running the trusty Glock 17 as always, uh, tried and true. The drill itself was released by a pretty popular dude on YouTube, Milspec Mojo, and it was his cold start of the month drill for this January. And so I wanted to try this one out on top of all the others that are out there, because this one seems very practical. A lot of good applications for real world scenarios, home defense, concealed carry. And so we'll see how it goes. I will admit, I think this will be a bit of a stretch drill for me. Definitely one of the more challenging ones I've done. But hey, the point is we're out here to practice. We can only get better from here. And so that's the mindset I'll take. I definitely also recommend a shot timer if you have one. Really helps kind of add that pressure and helps quantify your success or your progress. So with that said, I'll describe the drill and let's go for it. So for this drill, you'll have two targets, one positioned at 12 o'clock and another positioned at three o'clock. You will start four yards away from the target at 12 o'clock and you will shoot four rounds into that target while moving backwards. Once you have finished, you'll pivot to your three o'clock and engage that target with six rounds. And at that point, the drill will be over. What you're seeing on the screen now is the correct setup for the drill. I actually had to move bays in order to film this shot and I also had to change my second target's orientation for range safety purposes, but as long as you're able to have a wide enough breadth between the two targets, you'll be able to properly practice your target transitions. So what you're seeing now is my first attempt at this drill. One thing I'm noticing very quickly is that I can only shoot so fast, otherwise I freeze up pretty quickly. Oddly enough, my first attempt at this drill was actually my best time and accuracy. I got all four shots in the A zone, which I was pleasantly surprised by. And then I also got all six shots on my second target in the A zone, which I was just very surprised. Oddly enough, I then slowed down to get towards seven seconds and I actually was less accurate than what I was shooting and I got my six second first attempt. Maybe you could say it was a bit of a fluke, but either way, I'm happy that I did well my first time because I thought I would perform a lot worse, especially because this drill incorporates some techniques that I've never really practiced before. I sped up afterwards and got into the mid to low five seconds, but then I started throwing shots around the C and D zones. I will say I was pretty pleased with my ability to take my time to slow down and acquire my targets on both the first and second target. As I mentioned in my very first video when I practiced the triangles of calamity, I felt like I was rushing myself too much to get shots on target, so I made an intentional effort to slow down so I could be more accurate. I felt as though being able to shoot four shots in a row was pretty controllable, but oddly enough, I guess it's the extra two shots for the total of six on the second target that made it a lot more difficult. I was consciously thinking about my grip and trying to reinforce it as I was shooting all six, but maybe it was also because the target was a little further away that at a higher rate of fire, I just wasn't able to control it yet. So we finished up the range for the day, ran this drill maybe about eight times-ish or so, and you know, overall it actually went quite well. I think maybe I was uh, being a little too hard on myself in the beginning. I was not the fastest shooter out there, but you know, I was pleasantly surprised at my ability to shoot what I would say is a decent speed for me. At, uh, at good accuracy. So for me, seven seconds is right about where I want to be. I was able to push it to about 5.2 seconds or so, but then my shots really started to break at around the C's and D zones. And I saw for my target where I had to shoot six shots, I was still doing a lot of low left. So that recoil control is still, and the flinching is still something I need to work on. But so I'm going to do a breakdown now of what I feel like overall went well in more detail. What are some things I need to work on for next time? And so let's head back home and break it down. So we're back home from the range now and I did want to devote a little bit of time towards the end of this video to more explicitly break down what I feel like I did well on and what I can think about for next time. And my hope is by sharing this you can avoid some of the problems that I faced and you can make your range day more productive as well. The Glock held up very well as expected, no issues there, no feeding or malfunction problems happened this range day. The ammo I was shooting was just normal 115 grain 9mm, mostly out of Magpul mags because they're cheap and reliable, but also threw in some Glock mags there. But otherwise it was a pretty normal setup, I didn't have any particularly special equipment. 
I will say that I would recommend a shot timer. I think those are very efficient and useful tools to have that really add another dimension to your training. Instead of just going for accuracy, you can also go for speed as well, which is another part of shooting. I imagine if you're watching this video, you probably already know what a shot timer is, but just in case, a shot timer is just a really loud buzzer that measures your time in between shots. So to start off, as I mentioned earlier, I was pretty pleased with my ability to intentionally slow down when coming out of the holster and really making sure I had an acceptable sight alignment before I actually took my first shots. As I mentioned in my very first video on the triangles of calamity, I felt like I was pressuring myself to get shots on target too quickly, but this time I was uh, definitely slower in a good way. On a similar note, the second thing I was pretty happy with was my ability to be self-aware that I was even going fast in the first place. Not just out of the holster, but trying to shoot faster than I know I'm capable of doing reliably and accurately between both of my targets. I think as I do more drills, I'm starting to understand more of my limits and where I can push myself reasonably and where I need to develop a firmer baseline before I can actually take that next step. The third thing I'll say too is actually shooting while moving backwards was not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, I also realized that I wasn't moving back too much, but regardless, it was something that was new to me and I thought I would fumble around a lot more, but it actually went quite well. So now that we've talked about what we've done well on, what are some things that I can improve for next time? I'd say the biggest thing is definitely flinching. I noticed that even though I started off well doing all A zones at first, I would slowly track my shots low left as I progressed throughout my range day as I tried to speed up. Uh, that is definitely indicative of more flinching and just not having proper recoil control. And I know that's something that I need to work on more if I want to become a more proficient shooter. The second thing I would continue to work on is movement. Even though this one range day went well, I didn't cover huge distances during the drill and I need to focus on moving and shooting more and also at different speeds. Now I don't need to be practicing running and shooting just yet, but I do need to get out of the habit of only picking drills that are static because I now feel like I'm starting to progress to the level in my shooting where I can begin to incorporate movement as well. But not just moving back like in this drill, but moving forward moving side to side as well. All these different dimensions, if you will, I think would definitely kind of round out my skills a lot more. So what are some tips I'd give to you if you tried this drill? I would just make note of the fact that for that second target with six shots, I don't think you need to shoot all six in order to take away what you need from the drill. I'm really speaking mostly from a conserving ammo standpoint, and I will acknowledge you probably have to run this drill quite a bit to save those extra rounds, but I think you can still get a good amount of range time practicing shooting multiple rounds without going specifically for six shots. But clearly this is a pretty nitpicky thing and this by no means degrades from the drill at all. It's just something that I noticed for myself. And then another thing I would also mention too is reloading. This drill doesn't explicitly test reloading, but it's actually very easy to do. I was loading my magazines with 10 rounds each time, one for each drill, but I could have easily loaded fewer rounds or more rounds, but just been intentional about reloading afterwards. I think it would be a really good way to just kind of get those extra repetitions in instead of me reloading in between drills when there is no stress. So that'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks again for tuning in and watching my progress. I hope you were able to gather some things from watching me run this drill a few times, and I highly would recommend this one, especially because of how applicable to the real world I feel like it is. So until next time, train hard at the range, and I'll catch you in the next one.